Okay, Q&A time. So uh, the other day, maybe last week, I put out a question on my stories asking, what do you guys want to know? Q&A that I'm going to do for YouTube. So I've rounded this down to 10 questions that I've got. Some pretty good questions, some less normal questions, let's put it that way. And I'm going to go through, yeah, I'm going to help you guys out. There's some good ones though in terms of like bodybuilding and physique, strength. Yeah, I'm just looking at some of the questions now. And then a lot of personal stuff as well, so... Yeah, with that in mind, no mess around this video. Let's get into it. Let's have some fun and see see what happens, okay? Okay, right, like question one. So why did you start lifting? Really simple answer to this. And I was 15 years old and I loved sport. And then it got to a point of where sport was becoming less. I knew I wasn't going to carry on with it. I needed an outlet. And lifting was the way forward. We had, a, we had a gym at high school that I started getting into with a friend of mine and I fell in love with it. Absolutely fell in love with it. Fell in love with the pain. I remember doing some chest presses for the first time and going absolutely wild on it. I don't think I could move my arms for like five, six days. I was just stuck in position. All that new stimulus and that, that tissue being broken down that had never been broken down before was absolutely hilarious. But after that, I fell in love with the pain and fell in love with the feeling of getting a pump and getting stronger. And then that was it from there. That became my life five days a week for the last 15 years. And I can't think of anything better than lifting weights. And that's why. Now I, now I do it for multiple reasons. Mental health, strength, physique, you know, being aesthetic, being proud of my body. And just an everyday outlet. I love it, man. Love it. But yeah, so question two. What are you most proud of? Oh my God. What am I most proud of? A few things, a few things. What One of them is being in this industry still after a decade and still thriving. Really difficult. If you look at the, the stats on personal trainers in the industry, not many. Uh, I'm sure it's something like 90, 95% don't last the first year. So the industry started to become saturated. But even with that, people don't last. More and more people coming through. People are realizing it's not what they think it is. It's not as easy as they think it is. Turns out, you know, you've got to be passionate about helping people, not just lifting weights. <laughs> and that throws a lot of people off. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably most proud about still being in this industry and getting through COVID with all the crap that went down there. I'd be in the best position possible now, business-wise, really working out who I love to work with um, and having a really, really big client base full of guys who want to get in shape, pretty much. So that's what I'm most proud of, business-wise anyway. Um, question three, would you do anything other than coaching? <laughs> Fuck no, <laughs> never. No, I'll be really honest with you. I went, went through a really tough time when I had the gym and had to close that due to COVID circumstances and X, Y, and Z. And I really questioned the industry. I questioned my love for coaching, questioned my love for fitness, but that was just coming from a bad place. And for me to go through absolute catastrophe for it to get to a point of where I think, do I really want to be in this industry? Then I know I want to be in this industry. I have my ups and downs like anyone, but I literally cannot see, cannot see myself doing anything other than coaching. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I love this. Uh, and the people who work with me can probably tell, it's, it's nothing else that I care about. <laughs> it's nothing, I love fitness. I love strength, I love lifting weights, I love bodybuilding. I, it's sick. Right, question four. One in the poo or two in the poo? Um, one. Question five. Name something you wouldn't do once. Name something you wouldn't do once. Non-lubricated anal. Best answer I've got, because I'd do that twice. <laughs> Would you get another dog? I wonder who asked this. Not whilst we've already got one. She's an absolute princess. She's an only child. She does not do anything out of routine. <laughs> She's not centre of attention. She hates it. If there's other dogs around, she wants mum and dad to protect her. She's an absolute freaking baby. So no, I think it would be bad for her life. Who's your favourite bodybuilder? And why is it Rich Piana? Next question. <laughs> I fucking love Rich Piana. And if you know, you know. It's one of them situations I hate saying if you know, you know. But... Yeah, Rich Piano. A few stories about Rich Piano in terms of my enjoyment of his content. Now, people love him, people hate him because he's just nuts and he's unapologetically himself. Of course, he's passed away, but I remember doing like a few big diet phases where I was prepping for photo shoots. I was watching his um, Bigger by the Day and uh, Leaner by the Day series and he's got me through all my cardio sessions and I fell in love with his content and uh, chatting absolute crap. Um, being absolutely adamant, he's correct at all times. 
just massive personality, really entertaining. But yeah, absolutely. But in terms of like bodybuilders I love, I wouldn't say I've got like a favourite bodybuilder or anything like that. There's obviously the guys that I follow, but nah, there's not actually a favourite. <clears throat> okay, uh, next question. Top five supplementary moves to increase the bench press. Okay. Stuff that's going to help increase the bench press is going to be... No, it, it will be individual to each person, depending on where your weak point is. So if you're weak off your chest, there's going to be exercises that are going to help you there. But if you're strong off your chest, then you don't want to overdo that area because you're already strong there. You, you then want to work on your weaknesses, which could be midpoint, could be lockouts, it could be like triceps, you might have a weak back um, or weak lats and not have the stability in the press. So I'll go with my favourite. Let's do that. So not necessarily what's going to help you, but my favourite supplementary exercises for increasing bench press. Now, I'll go with number one, close grip bench press. Tried, tested, proven. It's the one exercise that really mimics your competition lift, but to put shit ton of emphasis into the triceps where the majority of people are weak. Guys are known for hammering chest all their life and the triceps becoming weak in that process. Not weak or behind, especially when it comes to like big, big uh, numbers and trying to lock them out. Most guys fail as soon as them, them triceps want to take over. Close grip bench press will help that. Number two, I love the dumbbell neutral grip press. The reason I like this is because, again, mimicking the bench press movement. However, we're dropping the elbows in, getting extra range than we can get on a barbell. So for example, barbell, we can hit the chest and we're limited to that range. With a dumbbell and we twist it into that neutral grip, we can actually go past that range that we're used to getting, okay? So we're getting really strong in that bottom point. And because we're neutral, in that sort of position, the triceps want to do the majority of the work. So it's a great tricep accessory as well. So you'll, you'll find me programming that quite a lot for the guys who, who want a big, big motherfucking bench press. Number three is a JM press. So a JM press is almost like a variation of a close grip and a skull crusher, okay? It's the kind of exercise that if you get strong at this, you're never gonna have a problem locking out heavy bench presses because as a tricep accessory, it is phenomenal, phenomenal. So if you never try to JM press, give it a go. What I would recommend is don't go low rep with it um, to start with, otherwise you might just blow your elbows out. It is a tricky movement to get correct. So take your time with it, high reps, build the load in, don't just think about whacking 20s on because it's not going to happen. Get the technique right. And once that technique's right and you're ingrained in that movement, your triceps are going to blow up size and strength wise, okay? Uh, number four, um, my favorite supplementary move for bench press, number four, is a dumbbell tate press. So like a dumbbell tate press, um, pioneered by Dave Tate, the guy who owns Elite FTS, who used to train at Westside Barbell. So where you've got dumbbells, open palm, and they're coming down to that chest, and pushing out, okay? So what you'll find is with a tape press, it puts the triceps in a very weakened position where you're not used to training them in that position and they're not used to being loaded uh, mechanically in that position. And you're getting strong. You, you, you're putting strength through the weakness and getting rid of that weakness, okay? And what you'll find is it's very tricky to use other muscle groups once that elbow is high enough. If you drop it down, you can start using good amount of uh, chest and, sh and shoulder but if you bring it up you're really limiting like you can't you can't flex your chest when the arms out here you just can't so if you get the position right on that unbelievable for the triceps really good at sort of like later into the session yeah that's my that's my number four number five no i'm not th these are in order by the way so number five is pause bench press if the goal is a big bench press and you're not pausing off your chest you're doing yourself a disservice okay because if someone's asking me about a big bench press, I assume you're a fan of powerlifting. With powerlifting's rules, and one of them rules is that you pause the bar on your chest and do not generate momentum by that kick. So if you go into powerlifting and you're really used to bouncing that weight off your chest, and suddenly <laughs> that judge holds you there for like a two second count, you're not pressing that weight, no chance. There's no chance because you're weak. You'll be weak from that position. So it's very important that at least one session every single week of your training blocks is paused in some variation. It could be paused close grip, that could be your accessory. It could be paused competition grip for two seconds. It could be paused competition grip for three seconds. All sorts you can do. 
wide grips. We could do pause, dumbbell, neutral grip, all sorts. Just make sure that you're pushing a variation of a pause in the, and develop that power from nothing. You'll learn how to kick it off the chest, you'll learn how to reflex correctly, and your chest will learn how to fire, and you'll learn how to get a connection with the chest um, even more so, okay? So there's my top five. That was a longer, longer, harder question for that. Next one, your Mount Rushmore of strength coaches. So I don't know how many people are in, are in <laughs> Mount Rushmore, but I'll give you the guys I've learned the most from. So number one, I really like Mark Bell. Mark Bell's taken a huge direction change currently, but from all his previous content, years and years and years of, of his uh, PowerCast, um, his podcast, all the guys he's had on there, uh, absolutely phenomenal. So I've learned a ton from Mark Bell in terms of st uh, strength progression, strength programming, uh, accessory work, managing volume and frequency and recovery, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, um, another one, I love <coughs> uh, Louis. So you can't go wrong with that, can you? Just because he pioneered a lot, I followed a lot of his work. I don't necessarily implement a lot of it, but there's parts that I will still implement that I've picked up over the years of working with different strength coaches. I'll go into seminars of world champions and things like that. But yeah, love Louis. Number three, I'm gonna be biased towards this, is Brett Gibbs. I worked with Brett for a while and he got me my strongest I've ever been and he got me there very fucking quick because his programming was phenomenal. Now Brett is arguably one of the best powerlifters who's ever been around and unfortunately got injured and, and had to leave the scene. But man oh man, phenomenal, phenomenal Brett Gibbs, okay? <clears throat> yeah, I could keep going on that, but I'm not gonna do it. I feel like it's more important just to go through people who kind of influence me more. Um, I've definitely been influenced more so bodybuilding coaches and things like that. Right, last question. Let's get let's get this done. So, question from Paul: Working out whilst restricted to gyms. Sorry, restricted to hotel gyms, and then in brackets, work traveling. Okay, so someone like Paul who, you know, travels a lot for work. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this will travel for work as well, and it becomes a bitch. We've not always got access to the kit we want, not always in an ideal situation where, you know, we, can't, we can use loads of different prime kit and Nautilus kit, that's just not the case. So for you guys who are restricted, the only thing you can do, and it seems so obvious, is take advantage of the kit you have. So if you've got no barbells and no dumbbells and it's just machinery, you have to take advantage of that machinery any way possible. So let's say you've got like a, a pin-loaded chest press machine in the hotel gym. Um, what you can do is just go unreal on the volume and that hit different rep ranges. You could do giant sets and things like that. You could change hand position, so you can go from hitting a lot of pecs to going close grip and, and getting a lot of triceps, things like that. Um, you could push that pushing intensity techniques like uh, supersets, drop sets, rest pause sets. You just gotta be creative with it. That's what you have to do. Because let's be honest, let's say you're on a specific program that tells you to hit two top sets and a back off but let's say the pin loader machine just doesn't go heavy enough, which a lot of them don't. Um, and you think, I can't do that. Okay, intense technique. Okay, we're, we're gonna go for 50 reps on a side lateral machine, <laughs> right? And we're gonna do rest pauses until we hit 50 reps. You have to get creative with your training, okay? It's not always gonna be in your favor. And it's not an excuse to not train. Other than that, it's probably important that you potentially Google it and find a gym that's local to your hotel, because there will be some fiver to get in, tenner to get in. If you're really committed, you'll pay it and you'll you'll go and get the job done. But yeah, okay guys, so that was 10 questions from my Instagram stories. I'll be doing these maybe like once a month, something like that, because I, I think they're quite interesting. It's nice to see what people want to ask and I don't know, the questions I can kind of come up with on the spot. I've not prepped for any of these, I've only, I've saved them, but I've not really noticed them or anything like that. So yeah, so that's YouTube Q&A number one. Follow me on Instagram if you don't. Like the video, that will help the algorithm massively. Please, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe and help out the channel. Really trying to push and, and grow on this platform. So if you enjoyed it, do that for me. And I'll catch you in the next video.